In this module, we shall learn the concept of limits. Look at the circle and the polygon inscribed in the circle. It can be seen that the area of the polygon is less than the area of the circle. Let AP represent the area of the polygon with n sides and let AC represent the area of the circle. Now, upon increasing the number of sides of the polygon to 8, we can see that the difference between the area of the polygon and the area of the circle has decreased. As we keep increasing the number of sides of the inscribed polygon, we can see that the area of the polygon gets closer and closer to the area of the circle. As n approaches infinity, the area of the polygon AP approaches the area of the circle AC. Symbolically, we can denote this statement as shown. To make the symbolic representation more concise, we introduce a term known as limit. We say that AC is the limit of AP as n tends to infinity. We can represent the limit symbolically as shown. Let us see the process of converting the given statement into symbolic form once again. Note, we call AC as the limit of AP as AC is the bound of AP. Look at the equations shown. What information does it convey? As per the equation, the limit of f of x as x tends to a is equal to L. f of x represents the height of the graph for a given value of x. Hence, we can interpret the limit L as the height that the graph of the function approaches as the value of x approaches a. Let us now find the limit of the function 1 upon x as x tends to infinity. In other words, we would like to know what value does 1 upon x approach as x approaches infinity. From the table of values, we can see that as the value of x increases, the value of the function decreases. For large values of x, the given function takes a value which is close to zero. The same can be verified by looking at the graph of the function. We can see that as x approaches infinity, the value of the function which is given by the height of the graph approaches zero. Hence, the given limit takes a value of zero. We should note here that the height of the graph will never become equal to zero. Hence, the value of a limit is not necessarily the value of the function at a given value of x, but it is the value that the function approaches to as x approaches a given value. Now consider that we would like to find the limit of 1 upon x as x approaches 2. Note that we can approach x from the left hand side that is from the lower values of 2 or from the right hand side that is from the higher values of 2. The limit obtained when we approach 2 from the left hand side is known as the left hand limit or LHL and we represent this symbolically by placing a minus sign in the superscript of 2. 
the limit obtained when we approach 2 from the right hand side is known as the right hand limit or RHL and we represent this symbolically by placing a plus sign in the superscript of 2. Let us now analyze the left hand limit. As we move towards 2 from the left, we can see that the height of the graph approaches the value 0.5. Hence, the left hand limit is 0.5. Similarly, on moving towards 2 from the right, we can see that the height of the graph approaches the value of 0.5 thereby giving us the right hand limit as 0.5. We can see that the left hand limit and right hand limit take the same value. This equal value gives us the limit of the function as x approaches 2. However, we should note that the left hand and the right hand limits do not always produce the same value. Consider that we have to find the limit of 1 upon x as x tends to 0. We can see that as we approach 0 from the left hand side, the height of the function approaches negative infinity. Hence, the left hand limit is negative infinity. On approaching 0 from the right, we find that the height of the graph approaches positive infinity. Hence, the right hand limit is positive infinity. In this case, we can see that the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. In such a situation, we say the limit does not exist. We say that the limit of a function f of x as x tends to a exists only if the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit. This equal value gives the limit of the function. Let us now evaluate some limits. Consider the function shown. Here we need to find the limit of the function as x approaches 2. On approaching 2 from the left hand side, we see that the height of the graph approaches 1. This gives us the left hand limit as 1. Now when we approach 2 from the right hand side, we again see that the height of the graph approaches 1. This gives us the right hand limit as 1. Since the left hand limit and the right hand limit are equal, we say that the limit exists and takes the value of 1. Consider the function shown. Here, we need to find the limit of the function as x approaches 2. The function is not defined at x equal to 2 because for this value, the denominator of the rational function will assume a zero value. The hole in the graph represents the same. On approaching 2 from the left hand side, we see that the height of the graph approaches 6. This gives us the left hand limit as 6. When we approach 2 from the right hand side, we again see that the height of the graph approaches 6. This gives us the right hand limit as 6. Since the left hand limit and the right hand limit are equal, we say that the limit exists and takes the value as 6. Hence, we can see that it is not necessary for a function to be defined at a point for the limit to exist at that point. Consider the function shown. Here, we need to find the limit of the function as x approaches 0. In the graph, the dot at 2 and the hole at 4 indicate that the function takes a value of 2 at x equal to 0. On approaching 0 from the left hand side, 
we see that the height of the graph approaches 2. This gives us the left hand limit as 2. When we approach 0 from the right hand side, we again see that the height of the graph approaches 4. This gives us the right hand limit as 4. Since the left hand and the right hand limits are not equal, we can say that the limit does not exist. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. We have defined the limit of a function and understood the symbolic representation of the same. Also, we have defined the conditions under which a limit exists.